Hello, this is Noble H. Mushtack, and today we are here with another episode of Managing Ubuntu. And today we are going to learn about user auditing, which is basically just listing users, adding users, deleting users, and modifying things about users. So let's open up the terminal. Okay, and to list users, we are going to type the command get ent and type in the keyword P A S S W D password, except there is no O and no O, and enter. Okay, as you can see, we have a list of a bunch of users. The first thing we see on the left hand side is um, the username of the user. So our username is cool person. You also have kind of these other system daemons and other users for specific purposes like syslog and message bus and avahi auto ipd um then you see an x x means that their password is stored in the shadow file which i will get to later this is their uid this first number the first number is their uid this is the unique number that identifies each user if the uid is within 1000 and 60000 that means it's a normal regular user but if it's less than 1000 like 100 a lot of these users are all system daemons these users are used for specific purposes so if it's less than 1000 then it's not a regular user or if it's greater than 60000 then it's not a regular user such as nobody nobody is for things that really don't need any permissions so you can just be nobody and do them okay and then the Second number here is the group ID, which basically means every user needs to be in some kind of group on their own. So that's the group ID, which is the group that contains this user or is related to this user. And then we have a description. So in our description, we have the full name of cool person, which is cool space person. You can see the full name of color D is color D color management daemon. So it's kind of a description of what this user is or their full name. And then we have the home directory. So our home directory is slash home slash cool person. That's basically the directory that we get to when we open up a shell. So right now we are in the sl slash home slash cool person. You can see this by doing echo and then typing a tilde because a tilde stands for the home directory. So now you can see that you are in slash home slash cool person as your home directory. And finally, we have the shell. So our shell is bin bash. It's basically the shell we get when we log into SSH and things like that. Um, if we see slash bin slash false, that means these people can't log in. If you see slash user slash sbin slash no login, that also means that they can't log in. So yeah. Okay, um, and, uh, one thing that might be useful is adding users. So we can do sudo. To add users, you need to be an admin. So type in sudo, and then the command add user, and then just type a username of some kind. So I'm going to do new user as our username. Then type in your password just for sudo. Then it'll ask you for another password. This is a new password, so we're creating the password for a new user. Just type in some kind of password for that. And then you can just type in the full name and then some phone numbers if you want to. It is correct. Okay, so now we've created this user. So to check that we've created, we can do get ent pass wd and then type in the username of the user, which is new user. And you can see that they have a home directory, they have name, they have a username. If we go to slash home and list the files in slash home, we can now see that there is new user along with cool person. So there's that. Okay, and yeah, I will get to deleting users in a bit, but we're going to use new user later, so I won't delete them just yet. Okay. So first, um, n next we can go to the shadow file, which we go to with get and shadow, and this just lists password information. Remember to use sudo with this command, so because you need to be an admin to see the password or shadow file. Okay, so now we can see there is cool person and new user. They both have kind of this dollar sign long sequence. These stand for hashes of their password. And then we see a bunch of numbers. I will get to these numbers later. Basically, the username, password hash, 
and then a bunch of numbers. If you see an asterisk, that means it's disabled. If you see an exclamation point, that means it's locked. A lot of the times, if you go up here, root, which is the, basically the user that has all of the permissions, is usually locked. It should be locked. So you should check that root is locked. And if it's not, you can lock root using the password command. So sudo passwd hyphen l root, and that will lock the root user. So you should always do that to make sure that root is locked. If you want to change a user's password, use the password command again, but don't type in hyphen l, just type in the username. So I'm going to change new user's password, and you can change it to a new password. Okay. Okay, and then to figure out what these numbers mean, it's a lot easier to use the charge command because it's a lot easier to read. So do sudo charge and list information about cool person. I'm going to type in the username cool person. Okay, so the last password change was on December 12th, 2016, and that's 17147. That's the number of days since January 1st, 1970. So that's what 17147 represents. It represents the state. And then the password expires on March 12th, 2017. That is 90 days af no. Yes, 90 days after December 12th, I think. Should be. Anyway, so that's what this number means. And password inactive, password expires means that your password will work, but then you are prompted to change your password right after you log in. Password inactive means that your password no longer works at all. And that is 30 days after this date. And account expires is February 27th, 2017. And that is this last number right here, 17224. That is the number of days this is from January 1st, 1970. And then the minimum number of days between password change is 10. That's the, the state. Maximum number of days between password change. So this is when your password expires. So 90 days after your last password change, your password expires. That's the state. And number of days of warning before password expires. So before seven days before your password expires, your computer will give you a warning that you need to change your password soon. And that's this number. And this at the end is just reserved for something that might come later. Nothing usually goes in it. Okay, so now let's say we want to list it for new user. We can just type in new user. Okay, and you see we don't really have the set, so we can use the charge command to set these values. So you usually want to set the minimum number of days to 10 days. That way, if you have a password history, your user can constantly change their password to bypass the password history. So only allow your user to change their password every 10 days. Don't let them change it faster than that. And then you want your user to change, keep changing the passwords because you don't want the same password forever. So you have to set a maximum day so your password expires after a certain amount of time. I usually set that to 90. And if your user is like inactive for a really long time, like 120 days, then you might not want them to be there anymore. So we set the I value, and that's 30 days. So 90 plus 30 days after their pass they change their password their account their password be will become inactive and 90 days just 90 days not 90 plus 30 90 days after their password change their password will expire which means that once they log in they will need a new password so that's basically the difference between expire and inactive and finally you probably want to set an ex expiration date so i will actually set it to the same expiration date up here which was 17224 so that is february 27th 2017 as shown here and then finally we just need to type in the new user so again hyphen m lowercase is minimum password hyphen m capital S is maximum hyphen i capital S is inactive and hyphen e capitalized is expiration date. And now we can list for new user and as you can see everything is changed again and it's the same as for cool person. Okay and actually if we go back to shadow and then list the shadow properties for new user you can see that these numbers are all different now because they are affected by the charge command. So that's basically how you use the charge command. Another file is group so etc group or getint group and 
this file lists all of the kind of groups of different users. So as you can see, we have the groups associated with cool person and new user. These don't have anyone in it. The people that are in the groups are listed at the end. The name of the group is listed at the beginning. X means that their password is in gshadow, which is another file, which I won't really get into this in the video. And the number is their group ID. So every group has a unique identifier, and that's the group ID. So as you can see in cool person and new user, no one's really in them yet. Samba Shell has just cool person. LP admin has just cool person. And you don't need to know what all of these groups are. I don't actually know what all of these groups are either. But the one that I'm really concerned about here, so if we go up here, sudo. Sudo means that this user is a user that can use the sudo command, which basically means you're an admin. So yeah, you, you can run things as root because you're an admin. So this is basically the group for all of the administrators in the computer. So let's say you want to make new user an administrator. We can type in sudo and then use the g password command hyphen a new user, which is the name of the user. And then after the name of the user comes the group. So sudo is the group because we want to make them an administrator. So we do that. And now if we go back to the group file, get into group and we list the administrators, which is sudo group. Now you can see we have cool person and new user. So if we want to get rid of new user because we don't need them anymore, we can do hyphen D. So hyphen A to add, hyphen D to delete. And now we can see we've removed them. And if you go back to the group file, we can see that it's now just cool person. So this is how you add and delete people as administrators to make sure that there's no users that are administrators that shouldn't be, and that all the users that should be administrators are administrators. So yeah, that's pretty useful. And I think, finally, the last thing I want to get to is disabling guest. So, to, um, to dis you might want to disable the guest because you don't want unauthorized people accessing your computer at all, even if it's through a guest account. So, to disable the guest account, we need to go to the etc light dm folder to do cd slash etc slash light dm and then type in ls. So sometimes there'll be this folder called lightdm.conf.d. If that's not there, then you need to make that folder. So make dear.lightdm.conf.d. Oh, make sure you type in sudo since this is a root owned directory. So yes, okay. So list again, and as you can see, we have this directory because we just made it. So go to that directory. Okay, and as you can see, there's nothing in this directory because we just made it. So in this directory, we need to make a file called, and I'm going to do sudo get it, to, I use get it to make this file, and I'm going to call it 50 no guest.conf. So no guest is kind of just the name of the configuration file, and 50 tells it the priority. That's not really important for this video, but basically low, I think higher number configurations get to override lower number configurations. But basically, since we only have one file, none of that matters. You just need to know that it's 50 hyphen no guest, 50 hyphen no hyphen guest dot conf. Okay. Okay. So then type in seat defaults in brackets on the first line, press enter, then do allow hyphen guest equals false, no spaces, uh, press enter, and then just save. Okay. Okay. So. We've done that, and now you can do ls, and now you can see that there's this file. If you cat this file, you can see what's in it. Okay. And then, I think that's it. If you do sudo reboot, you should not see the... sudo reboot just reach those to the computer. You can also go from here and restart the computer. So, if we restart... we should see that the guest is no longer there. And as you can see, I'm using VMware.
Okay. Yes, we do not have the guest account, as you can see. We only have cool person and new user. Okay. And finally, I did not get to this earlier, but I do want to get to it now. I want to delete new user. Because I want to show you how to delete a user. Okay, so. Okay, so we're going to open up the terminal. Okay, and to delete a user is the del user command, so sudo del user, and then we can type new user, which is the username of the user, but uh, there's also a home directory for new user, slash home slash new user, so to remove that, we do two hyphens, remove hyphen home space. So this option tells the del user command to also delete its files, so we're going to delete the user and its files, so we do that, type in our password, and del user is now gone. Gone. If we do get hint password, we can see there's no new user. And if we list slash home, because we moved the home directory, there's also no slash home. There's no slash home slash new user. So yeah, and that's basically it for user auditing. Hopefully, all of this helps you in securing Ubuntu computers. And have fun managing Ubuntu.